beautiful day. Oh, hi guys, this is uh, Aid from Witchbike.com on a beautiful spring day in the uh, middle of April. Today I'm going to be reviewing, as you already know because you've clicked on the video, the new uh, Suzuki GSX S 1000A. Now the A is for ABS, it's the ABS model. It's uh, a <laughs> really nice looking bike. And this is direct competition with the Kawasaki Z1000. Now Z1000, if you've seen it, looks like a transformer from the front. Now this one, there's little fangs down to the light. Looks more like a big evil spider. The little fangs here. Arr! Not bad. Now I like that fantastic metallic green which some people might not like, on the Kawasaki. This has got a splendid, beautifully shiny metallic blue, which is the true Suzuki colour, of course. It also comes in red and black, but there's more black, and the, the red on it is less than this blue. And uh, it also comes in a blacky, graphite grey sort of colour, which will make it look more kind of grown up, mature, blend in a little bit more. But uh, I imagine most people are going for this blue colour, and why not? Now, this is to say, got ABS brakes. It also has got, it's got Brembo calipers, and that's fantastic. Let's uh, just put it down here. Um, nothing wrong with those brakes, that's for sure. It's got ABS and one disc. Upside down forks. Obviously, this is a sports naked. It's a super naked. Super really refers to anything I really want to leave and over. So the quacks there. BMW S1000 single R. Now the standard exhaust, it's not too big, it doesn't look too shabby. As we'll hear in a second, it doesn't sound too bad. That's quite felt, there's no bits or little bits hanging off where the engine here is. Like the braided hoses. I like the little bit of thing at the bottom, it just smarters up where the pipes are before they lead into the cat and the silencer. That's pretty nice, isn't it? I mean, I'm a real big fan of this colour. GSXX 1000. It's a bit of a mouthful, that. GSXX 1000. G6. GSX. G6. I've got a G6. I've got a G6 is 1000. No, fuck it. It's not, <laughs> it's not so easy to say, is it? Oh, dear. Now, a pillion seat. It's not a token one. actually looks pretty decent. Doesn't look too bad. Nice. Grippy foot pegs, but I need to change those. Uh, 190s at the back. That goes with the look of a super naked. So I'll just give a good look around it. I don't usually get as close up on bikes these days in my reviews. Not bad. Now, two things that you probably might buy with this bike when you purchase it is probably the little front fly screen that comes up, uh, which the MT range seems to sell most of. <coughs> for the Yamahas, a similar thing on this one. Now, I don't know, I'm not sure if it's going to help the looks or not, actually. I think it's a nice looking bike, and it is a super naked, and I think when you put the screen on, a little screen on it, it just changes it a little bit, it changes its character. And this looks really good as it does, as it is. So the bike is an option, and a lot of people will go for that, because end of the day, it's still going to make a difference on a 70 or 80 miles an hour sort of speeds with the wind deflection. Another thing a lot of people might opt for is the Yoshimura can. Also, Yoshimura and Suzuki go back a long way. They've got a, a, a great relationship. Um, would you get it? Well, I don't know. When you hear it up, what you think? I think it sounds really good. I don't think you need an end can. However, for five or six hundred quid, Yoshimura can will take a little bit of weight away. Might open up the breathing a little bit. And uh, overall, might sound a little bit better. I know a sports naked of this ilk, you probably want it to sound aggressive, or even more aggressive than stock. Well, I'll just I'll start up now anyway. Keys are where you'd expect it to be. It's obviously got a digital dash. Let's see what it's like. There's the old wishy washy woo goo. It should be sound effects with these things, shouldn't it? <laughs> Programmable sound effects. You should be able to put a USB in here and put your own sound effect on there, like with your mobile phones. <laughs> Right, now, it's got a rev counter at the top. Now, usually, it's a dash that goes up and down, not a kind of ongoing block. 
makes it a little bit harder to see, uh, but it's pretty cool. Speedo's quite clear, gear indicator is very clear, and that's good. Fuel gauge, it's got the range here, I always like the range, shows you how far you got to go before you run out of petrol. That's a bloody good idea, mostly seen in cars. But you can also put on average mileage, and the normal mileage and trypometers. Total miles down here, nicely run in, time. The ABS light will go off after about 5 miles an hour. And traction control will flicker. Now the traction control is the only real electricery that this has. Let's start it up. We can, well, I'd have to start up. There's a button on the left. And you press select, hold it down. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah, there it is. Actually, when you release it, little four bars come up. Now moving the mode arrows up and down, you can influence it. You can turn traction control off, which a lot of people will like, so it's handy to have at least an off feature. There's one, two and three. Three being the most intrusive traction control. So the one you'd slip into when it's wet or damp. I'm going to leave it in one. Just press the select button again. Take it off and there it is set in. So it's very easy. Right, the bike's um, just over nine, well just under nine two without ABS. It's nine thousand five and a bit. You know, it could be 9,600 with the ABS. Um, I think uh, these days you'd be silly not to get the ABS. I mean, you can turn it off anyway. Okay, it adds a touch bit of weight and it adds a bit more to the servicing costs because they're more complicated when you come to the brake service. However, it's there to save your life should you run out of grip, the bike will save you. I'd just keep it in one myself. I think it's you know, hardly any intrusion, but it's there if you need it. If you don't want it, turn it off. So, 9.6 with the ABS and the Yoshimura N can five six hundred quid. I think if you went in there to the dealer and said, Look, I want the bike with the extra Yoshimura can, ten grand, they'd probably shake your hand. So you get that cracking exhaust, ten thousand pounds, and ABS with traction control. Excellent. To me, you know, that uh, really cements this. And it's interesting to see how the Kawasaki compares. I'm yet to ride that, but I will. Okay then, right, let me get my stuff on and uh, we'll take this out and see what it right. is like. I'm all suited and booted. Let's take this blue beast for a ride. Right, leg over, which is not too bad. It's quite a low bike, it's not, one of, not a sports bike where the uh, back end's really high. Okay, turn it on, Evo. There's your washy washy woogie again. There she blows. There's that speedo again. Lovely track control one. Lovely double First gear. Look around. Don't spin it on the grass like a complete mug. Um, well, first impressions immediately. Um, the seat's quite hard. The seat is quite hard. The seat itself is quite unforgiving. However, I can tell you now, I'm going to ride down here, the suspension itself is very compliant. So actually the overall effect is, this is a comfortable bike. I mean if you had a really soft suit, soft suit, soft seat and really compliant suspension, it'd be so soft you really would lose out of feedback. So actually I think they've got it about right. The clutch is absolutely perfect in my opinion. It's exactly what I'd look for on a clutch. In that, it's not stiff and it's not super light. So there is a good amount of feel for it. It's unlikely to hurt your hands on longer journeys. And also, yes, for me, that's the smooth takeaway. <laughs> I'm not known for my smooth takeaways. The clutch feel is absolutely spot on. Just try to do it again, I'll do it a second. I'd pull the clutch in third, yeah. That's nice, just, there's no there's a car behind me. Just try and put, let's do it again. Yeah, just this clutch just rolls perfectly out as you put the accelerator on. That's nice. So it's really easy to ride, uh, clutch-wise. Now, the throttle itself, now it's not instant jerky like the MT range, or as I found the Ducati Scrambler, where as soon as you touch the throttle open, it kind of does a kind of bolt, you know, does a kind of woohoo like that. This one, it's not completely rolling and linear like I saw in a Panigale or BMW 
or my CBR, you know, it's not really smooth as you roll it on, it progressively goes up. It just goes a little bit and then does the boost. So, you know, an absolute new beginner would have to kind of just get used to it a little bit. Let's put the visor down, shall we? It's just a bit windy today. So the power kind of does come in with a little bit of a kind of jerk like that. And power wise, yes, there's plenty of it. It feels quite live. The handling feels good. It feels an honest place to be because the handlebars are really wide. They're quite high up um, relative to your whole body position. Uh, but not super high up like with a scrambler. Yeah, in a, they're in a really comfortable sort of position. So my forearms are, you know, almost parallel to the ground. Almost, just a bit higher. Um, which does mean that it's going to be comfortable because there's no pressure whatsoever on your wrists. And uh, if you've got a sports bike, this is a second bike, that would be a bloody god blessing up, wouldn't it? Oh my word. So I found the pad of garlic, my wrists are aching pretty quickly. Right, now, I've got my voice down because it's quite sunny. Okay, I'm struggling to see the red counter. You have to really kind of glance at it, which is not completely safe. The speedo, you can make it out, but again, it's not massively clear. That's because it's a really bright day. This is where a tinted fly screen as the option might be well be worth it. The sound. Yeah. Well, I like it. You don't have to get an cam, but I suspect it will be the most popular mod, along with the fly screen. Uh, the mirrors, which I haven't adjusted in my uh, excitement getting out and about. Oh, pretty good, actually. I'd say, again, 30% of the view is your elbow, but uh, I've come across a lot worse. I think 30%, actually, it ranks as good. If it was a scale of 1 to 5, it'd be a 4. The only one I've known that's better, I think, was the uh, Kawasaki, the Touring one, the uh, Versus 1000. Right, spluttering along, as I'm getting used to the throttle now, as you're putting it on really gently, you don't get as much jerk. So once you've had this bike, um, you know, more than a day, put about 200 miles on it, this bike becomes smoother and smoother and it's already not bad. Which is good for pillion riders, because I think you've got plenty of space on the back for pillions, it's the kind of bike you would take someone out on. Yeah, it might not be the best bike for super long distances, but certainly down to Brown's Hatch or so, it wouldn't be bad. Right, so there you go, I've forgotten about the thing, and it, it does kind of crash off, that's in fourth gear. It doesn't really matter which gear you're in, it will make that initial jump to nothing, to kind of throttle. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of um, throttle travel. But most people are used to that these days. A lot of bikes have that uh, instant kind of throttle. It's not okay, not my complete cup of tea, but I'll soon get used to it. It's a nice place to sit. This beautiful, big, thick tank in front of you with that marvellous metallic blue. You know, it's really nice. Especially in the sun, it glints and it really kind of catches your eye of it. It's really nice. There's not much clutter in front of you. I think naked essentially look nicer in front than I think a fared bike. And that's coming from someone who loves sports bikes. Because it's less distraction. You know, it's really kind of smart down there. You can't see wires and extra bits of plastic and loads of bolts and screws and flatty, floppy bits as you might get on a sports fairing. So let's see what this is like in the more urban environments. I am now a bit of stop start. So now I'm used to that throttle a bit. It's certainly fine. So we get in front of these bikes. We should get, sort of get a bit of a nice takeaway. Oh, maybe not then. They're cooking now, lovely. Well, now this is obviously a one litre bike. You know, it's a big boy. It's actually the engine and components from the Jixxer 1000. I mean, you don't, you don't have to say any more than that. This has got some decent power. I mean, it's slightly different kind of form. Now, the, the, the paperwork, initial brochures say that it does 143 horsepower. However, speaking to a dealer, he mentioned actually they printed those quite a while ago. And before, you know, the, when it went out on press releases, but once they finished the bike and they put it on dyno, it's actually nearer or above 150. Yeah, 
there, so power is not a problem, it's there if you need it, everywhere. And we'll do a roll on in um, sixth gear, shall we? So it's quite quiet here. Right, I'm in sixth gear, doing 30 miles an hour. I mean, it's not even reaching 2,000 revs. You know, and there's power there. So in any gear, you'd be quite relaxed, and you've always got something there, so you need to overtake something, or evade potential danger. Yeah. The indicator's in the most perfect place. It's already at home. I haven't even pissed the horn once by mistake. Let's just start moving. Let's see. The wind does hit you. Wow. That's quite nice, that. I'll tell you why. Because it's fast, it's got the power, it's very linear, see, but you're not scared, you're not intimidated, and it's not ferocious. It doesn't go blurry. You know, that's all the power you're going to need on a bike like this, for sure. Quite impressive. What do you do with, um, take it on some kind of twisty stuff, just get a better feel for handling, how it uh, might inspire confidence in turning. But, uh, yeah, responsive is its nickname, I think. Yeah, it reminds me in the responses of that uh, to catch scandal or the MT7 and MT09 bikes, including the Tracer. In uh, the middle and the highest sporty mode of those bikes. Whereas you're kind of pootling along, and then you put the front on it, it comes alive instantly. You don't, yeah. <laughs> That's really quite interesting, actually. It's so different to uh, the sports bikes I've been riding. But that's by no means not a bad thing, and it's not a good thing, it just means it's different, and I think that's what you might want. A lot of people actually prefer that. I'm not sure I've put that video, shouldn't I? Definitely want to do a Yui around here. Just out a little bit. I don't want to go on a motorway or dual carriage, that's for sure. Let's do a quick, um, there's no one behind me, so I can safely hold on a bit. That's what my U turns like. Look behind. No, panicked a bit, didn't make it. Bugger. I was always shit on that in a mod one. <laughs> right, nothing behind me. Quick shoulder check, lovely. Let's go into a yeah, great fun village. So this bike is uh kind of been loaned out by the fantastic guys at Hazemere Motors down in Borden near Alton. They've got a great array of uh, bikes down there. Multi marks, they've got Honda, Suzuki, Yamahas, they've got loads of second hand bikes, particularly healthy stuff, healthy, particularly helpful stuff, it might well be healthy. <laughs> I've always found that when I've gone down there. Really enthusiastic about bikes, makes a huge difference to someone who's just a pure salesman, in my book. Just put the voice out a bit, so I'll get a bit hot. Uh, right, um, So overall, I'm pretty impressed. I'm interested to see how the Kawasaki compares. So I think they just are absolute, 100% toe to toe fighting competitors. Let's put that down again. So right, let's go uh, as usual. What do I like about this bike? Um, the seat position is very good, very comfy. You do feel in control of the bike. I mean, you get up to the big revs. At speed, of course, you are kind of hanging on, but that's what you'd expect. The actual ride is is comfortable. I've got no real complaints, but then again, I've only been on it for like 30 minutes, probably. So it's not a huge barometer, but you kind of get an idea and a feel for these things. It feels good between the legs, and that there's no pinching. It's quite narrow. Your knees naturally hug nicely. This nicely sculpted tank. The clutch is lightish. Certainly not heavy, so that's good for your left hand. The right hand, you don't have to roll the throttle much to put on any sort of speed. So, that's also good for your right hand. The front brake is very progressive and it's adjustable, which is good. 
Left brake, I'm not sure I've actually used it. Left brake. Back brakes, try it. Yeah, as you'd expect. Fucking useless, but good when you're coming to a stop to, go, to make yourself look like an idiot with a bouncing bike. Um, I do like the fact that it's very svelte at the front. There's no complications, no huge great wires, it's just got a simple frontage. Simple controls, only one bit of electricery, and it really is a bike you just kind of get on and go. There's nothing hugely complicated to start up on this bike. I like the fact it's got a decent pillion. I like the standard noise, but I think Yoshimura can might make this even better. I like the way the power's linear. After all, this is a four cylinder, so it hasn't got that screaming sound or kind of raucous kind of delivery that a, a twin might have or a triple. I suppose the other competitors this would be the, the Steeds from Triumph and probably the Speed Triples nearest its competitor because it, um, Street Triples a couple of grand cheaper and not as powerful. Right, let's have a look what it's like on the other Indian streets. Let's get to the National Speed Day sign. Right, a bit. Right, you might not be able to hear me much from now on. I'll keep quiet. <laughs> I came down on my scooter today, not my CBR, and uh, I went to go and put the left uh, back brake on. <laughs> of course, it's a clutch, never mind. I mean, I realised as soon as I started pulling it. That flew. Yeah, it's got a decent bit of sound, actually. Right, oh, yet again, got fucking no idea where I am. No idea where I'm going. Go down the other. changes down beautifully actually very nicely you don't have to fish for it you don't think oh did I go down the gear it just goes down no fuss slots it beautifully another thing I found while I was just putting on a few beans there was that this is very secure you feel very secure you feel like the brakes are going to save your ass you feel like the acceleration isn't going to spin any wheels out I don't know what the tyres are, I didn't look properly, but you feel like you've got some good grip. It just feels safe. Now, to most that's going to be a massive boom when they test ride it. And to others, there's more minority, that might put them off. They might want to say which kind of uh, puts them on the edge of death. Some people like that thrill. And I put my hand up, I think I'm one of them. However, this bike just feels so well put together. I mean, Suzuki have come on uh, well the last couple of years. I think they've had to raise their game to match the competition from the other Japanese marks, never mind the Europeans. And I think they've succeeded in what I've seen of the Jixxer 750 as well. It's, it's worth checking out the whole range for sure. Mm. So what don't I like about this bike? I don't like... I don't like this Speedo thing at all. Uh, to be honest, I, I'm, I'm struggling to see actually any, anything in its current guise. Now that doesn't bother me hugely, because after about a day or two of the bike, you know what speed you're going by the sound of the engine and where you are in the gears. So you know, I'm, I really look at my speedos and that. So I kind of have, an, I kind of have an idea. So the front I can't see the red counter. I hardly see what speed I'm doing. I don't. Doesn't really matter. It wouldn't stop me buying this bike, but for others that might be quite important. So I think that fly screen might be a good addition because that will definitely help with less glare on the screen. Um, what else don't I like? What else don't I like? Actually, there's not really anything else I don't like about it. I think it does what it says in the tin. It's a super naked bike. It's got power. More than that, it's got refinement. It's miles more refined than the Yamaha MT bikes. Well, I appreciate they are slightly different, even the MT-09. Not quite its competitor, but the MT09 Tracer, for example, the MT09, not hugely cheaper. You could step up to this, this is what you liked. 
I've got no fucking idea where I am now. This looks like a good little couple of bins. Woohoo! I think you have a lot of fun on this bike. And this bike is starting to make more and more sense to me. I think the benefit of not having any screen there, you just, you really feel everything. And that's pretty cool. Oh Christ, I've come out on a flipping uh, dual carriage ray. Didn't even, not, didn't even know I was there. I can't miss Mercedes. hear me for sure now, so I'll stop talking a bit. Right, luckily, I managed to retrace my steps. So all is good, and it's good. Go for that. In fact, uh, I've got to get the bike back exactly one minute. That might be a little bit of a struggle. <laughs> oh dear, oh dear. I never take uh, any notice of where I'm going. <laughs> so yeah, lot to like about it. Very little to, to uh, not like about it. In fact, I take it back a bit about that speedo uh, unit because when the sun is behind you, it's clear. It's you know, it's clear as you'd like really. It's just the side angles when the sun's in front. So the other three quarters. But that's uh, similar to a lot of LCD screens, to be fair. But obviously it's going to be worse than an AK bike. But it wouldn't really bother me. Um, I can't deny it's important. For example, I had no idea what the time was until I turned this bike around. And the sun was in that uh, better position. And I could actually see the time and got a bit of a shock. So now, at that time when the bike should be back. Never mind, day. I don't think it's one of those ones where if you're late from a test ride you start incurring into a time zone where you're not insured. I've heard that before. Um, where was that? Columbus. I thought, oh, it's silly, didn't it? I mean, it could be late for any reason. Maybe it could happen. And then not to be insured, that's taking a fucking piss. No, oh, yeah, yeah. Not the case with Hazel and Notice, I should add. In fact, it was very relaxed, didn't actually say. <laughs> no, it don't bust gut on it, so... Uh, I wanted me to enjoy the bike, and that's the best thing. And I have. It has been a good bike to ride. So I'd like to see it compared to the Z Fowl. But, you know, it's super naked. It sounds good to me. We all like a bit of naked action, don't we? Oh, well, I'll sort of fair then. So, yeah. Well, it's been like it's super naked. Definitely, definitely, definitely. Take this bike out for a ride. If you're in the market for a bike 10 grand and under, which covers a lot of bikes of different types, then have a look at this one as well. You might find this is the bike for you. So this was Aid from whichbike.com signing off. Check out the uh, other videos. Remember to like and subscribe. Check out the uh, new website get involved, become a member, starting the staff. Hope to see you on there. Until then, when I'm rolling backwards because I haven't put a fucking brake on, <laughs> it's uh, a good night for me and uh, safe riding out there. Cheers.